Next thing is we're going to do, we're going to use the same track, and we're going to do a hammer, thumb, hammer, pop, hammer, thumb, hammer, pop, hammer, thumb, hammer, pop, hammer, thumb, hammer, pop, hammer, thumb, hammer, pop. Should I do the eighth notes with that too? Start off with quarters, you know, until you get the hang of the physicality and get get the uh, excess weeded out, you know, and get the form. Because this is going to be more, your right hand's really not changing anything here. Your left hand's what's adding the stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to hammer, but you want to make sure that you don't, like, fly way out and come down, that it's just a very, it's almost like pressing. You know, I mean, you are going to hit it a little bit, but it's not as, it's not as What's a, you don't whack it, you know, it's not like, you know, it's not like you hit it, you know, it's, it's like you just come down on it in a way to where you get a good tone. So in working on this, you know, you can actually, this can actually spawn a complete left hand thing. All right, let's do this actually, this would be good. Let's do a little hammer on exercise. I'm usually not a fan of exercises, but sometimes they do. Forgive the pun, come in handy. But I think we did this one before. We may I have. Practice this. All right, yeah. so just one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, the thing about this is, is that we kind of want to integrate muting techniques in. Now, it's not like you got to worry about getting every single little thing that you hear out of the sound, you know, like the little string ring stuff, but you want to minimize as much as possible. Now, do you use the hair scrunchie? Oh, I have to, I keep forgetting about that. Next lesson, I'll have my scrunchie. Okay, this will help. Um, I, I particularly, some people like those fret wraps, and they're a little pricey for what they are. You can get these at the drugstore for next to nothing, you know, I mean, they're like two bucks for a pack of six of them, you know, something like that. I remember going to a drugstore and like, you know, I got a big jar full of them over there that I just went to the drugstore and I bought every one they had. I think I went to like three or four different drugstores and just cleaned them out. And, um, cause I wanted to have a pile of them and not, you know, just have, so I've had these things in the jar probably there for 15 years. But <laughs> anyway, every time I change strings, you know, I, I put a new one on cause they get a little, you know, stretched out and stuff, but just squish it down in there. And it doesn't get rid of everything, but it minimizes it. Yeah, See, not the, bad. So the idea is to the force of hitting the bass like this. Everything that's not tied down and secured string-wise on your on your instrument is going to ring, right? Just reacting to the force of you hitting the instrument. So, in, in getting back to the hammer-ons, I'm going to do this on my low four strings. So, my left will do the same things as yours will. Okay. Now, one thing I do is, like, when I come down, especially on the higher strings, let's say if I was on what would be your A string. See how these fingers kind of come down after the fact a little bit and, and land, kind of land and touch them a little bit? It's almost like there's a cushion of air. Did you ever uh, go to the, do they have Six Flags in New York? Uh, no, but I've been to them a lot as a kid. Okay. You know that ride to where they take you up real high and then they drop you on that thing and then at oh, the- Oh, I hate those rides. I hate those rides so much, but yes, I know them. You know, the, and then the cushion, the, it's like a cushion of air stops you. Mm -hmm. Air pressure stops you. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what you want to visualize here. Pretend like there's this cushion of air that hits these fingers and keeps them from hitting the string. Allows them to just kind of ease into them to keep them from ringing. So as I'm coming down, let's say on a first finger note, these kind of glide in real silently after the fact and, you know, keep the strings from ringing. Are you talking about these fingers? Yeah. Okay. If you're using a first finger note, now if you're using a second finger note, let your first finger bar over like this comfortably. 
just behind whatever it is you're playing. So if I'm going, first finger will keep everything quiet. So as I do the exercise, I'm integrating those muting techniques. When I do a first finger, those see how they glide in there? And then first finger takes over. You'll also use this technique as a basic mute left hand muting technique for slap and two and other slap stuff, two handed tapping techniques if you get into that. Right? Outside of that, you want to listen to the quality of tone in your notes and consistency of attack. So one doesn't like stick out in a weird way compared to the others. So you want to get your left hand able to play notes. Because you're going to use this in all kinds of stuff. Um, I use it a lot uh, for like my really fast speed playing. You know, I, I do a lot of a. Uh, that rather than try to kill myself and get my two fingers like at warp speed I've, I let my hand left hand do it so I'm, I'm working on a technique where and phrasing thing to where I pick different sequences of notes depending on how I want to shape them and the combinations of hammer-on pull-offs <laughs> 